Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today, and I don't know why I'm beginning in such a melodic tune, but I am excited to return to Night City. We're talking about Cyberpunk 2077. I am loving seeing some respect be put on its name. Ladies and gentlemen, Cyberpunk is enjoying its biggest bounce back yet. We thought the next gen launch would be that moment. No, it is actually seemingly Edge Runners, its update with the anime that is leading to Cyberpunk having the most players it's had since launch. I'm really pumped to talk about this on how update 1.6 has been bigger than expected on a feature front, which we're going to get into the nitty gritty on that alongside some mods, but also we're going to talk about the profound impact that Cyberpunk 2077 is having on some people. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're new here, whether you are enjoying the bounce back, maybe you skipped out on the launch and you're hopping in now, or perhaps you've been here for the whole ride, Welcome aboard, consider subscribing if you're new, and with that, let's begin our conversation. So the way this whole conversation started for me was when I saw over on the Twitter that CD Projekt Red had posted, each day of this week, Night City has been visited by one million players, both new and returning. We wanted to use this opportunity to thank you for being with us and playing the game. Thanks, Chooms. So... As many people are aware, Edge Runners update just dropped. This is update 1.6, which introduced a plethora of new features, new gigs, but it was synchronized with the Edge Runner anime. Now, I just started this last night. Your boy's three episodes deep. This thing is legit. Artistically, it just oozes style. I love David Martinez as a character. It's given me, and I know this is a really big compliment. I'm not saying it, it is as good, but it is giving me Breaking Bad vibes, where I feel every episode in Edge Runner that ends, I go, oh, I gotta know what happens next, and I click the next button. I had to stop myself because it was getting late, but I am 100% binging through the rest of this tonight. I cannot wait to learn more, but this anime is fantastic. I've seen a lot of people being very positive on it, and that has led to a ton of people going to the game. If you check the Steam player count earlier this week, Cyberpunk 2077 was the most played single player game on Steam, even beating out the very popular, the very trending Elden Ring. That is significant, and it's because of the fact that CD Projekt Red hung with it, continue to update it, hopefully with a million players plus every day this week, they are seeing this game, this series should not be abandoned, continue to support it because people wanted to love on it, now you're giving them good reason to do so. And for many people, when they saw the Edge Runner anime, it felt like this is what Cyberpunk is all about. This is what we were missing. You know that moment in the beginning of the game with V and Jackie and it's just a time lapse? People wanted that part to be playable, right? To build up the origin of V as a character, which I think is completely fair criticism of the game. It almost feels like Edge Runner takes place in that time period, and it fills in that gap that is missing. It also depicts the world in such a dark, disturbing way. Absolutely love what Studio Trigger has done with it, and it's had a complete impact on the success of Cyberpunk. In fact, it has been revealed that in this past week, it was the top eighth most watched piece of content on Netflix. We're talking about a brand new video game IP that just launched in 2020, and it's already in the top 10 on a very popular streaming service. I know it's popular to poop all over Netflix. I hear you on that. I'm not a big Netflix guy myself, but they have a lot of good content there, a lot of good exclusive content. The fact that Cyberpunk's Edge Runners has found its way into the top 10 is nothing short of magnificent. And you're 100% going to see CD Projekt Red continue to dive deeper into television, anime, movies, all that stuff. Because look how it has helped them continuously. The Witcher saw its highest concurrent player count even when the game had launched. When the game first came out in 2015, right? The Witcher 3. It wasn't until Netflix The Witcher happened that, boom, the game exploded again years after release. CD Projekt Red is getting the rub from Netflix again with Edge Runner, and people are discovering their product through it. So you know this multimedia approach is going to continue on through CD Projekt Red and whatever else they do. And they would certainly be wise, although I don't know how it ends, but they would probably be wise to do a second season of Edge Runner. Maybe, again, I don't know how it ends, how conclusive it is. Maybe it should just be a one-time thing. That would be awesome. But I just feel 
giving Cyberpunk the rub is what you need right now. If you got something working off the bat, which people are excited and loving, then you might want to stick with it because that wasn't the case for your game. So of course, that's the first half of the conversation, the complete impact it has had. What has now happened is because of Red Mod and how that system is evolving, the mods for Cyberpunk 2077, as more people are playing it, are starting to see a larger focus. There are videos going viral on Twitter, YouTube shorts going viral. There are breakdowns of how to completely overhaul your game going viral. I wanted to showcase a couple of those mods. Some of them are not brand new, but are achieving that vision again of what Cyberpunk can be. And make no mistake, as someone who is a huge Bethesda Game Studios fan, it does not matter who is adding this content in. The fact that it exists gives Cyberpunk that extra juice, and CD Projekt Red is 100% going to feed off of it. That is why they are introducing the new modding tools. So these are things like, for example, getting Lucy from the anime into the game where you can make V look just like Lucy. This is awesome. Lucy is a very compelling character as of episode three right now. I'm not sure what her motivations are. I don't know if we should trust her or not, but... I love her as a character so far. I love that uncertainty. That is what I think makes someone compelling because you don't know what their next play is. But I digress. You can look like her in the game thanks to the mods. This is not including, of course, some of the new content that came in through Edge Runner where you could get the David Martinez jacket. But also, some of these mods are awesome. For example, Let There Be Flight. This has been around since about December of last year where there are flying cars and it's only continued to be improved and fine-tuned. So this is something people really want in the game. I remember when CD Projekt Red confirmed it wasn't going to be in the game. There's a lot of folks upset about that, but now mods have made that possible. Another thing that mods have made possible is the Metro system. One thing that we covered on this channel was some of the cut content that people were really digging into and there was a abandoned metro system there now cd project red dismissed that and said no 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 we were never going to do that that wasn't a part of the plans but the assets were there there was some type of idea that was being pursued even if it was brief well someone had taken it into their own hands and now there's a fully functional metro system that you can use to travel between fast travel points in cyberpunk 2077 and it works magnificently it looks awesome some of the videos i've seen for it just really again bring the city to life as you're above it all whether you're in the flying car or you're in the metro system watching the city active beneath you it makes you fall in love with the setting so modding has also played a big part in people seeing the game and going oh i i need to give this another shake this looks too good to ignore and more people are finding out the story's awesome the gameplay is awesome i think the choices in a lot of instances do leave a bit to be desired but it is still a magnificent game and then we get into update 1.6 itself now i want to shout out my good friend juice head we've collabed in the past but he has a great video highlighting secret new features that have come out in patch 1.6 now comparatively speaking to previous updates there are less new surprising features in cyberpunk 2077 compared to like 1.3 or 1.5 where the next gen update dropped but there still are some ones here for example in update 1.5 one of the more surprising things that made cyberpunk a little more of a gritty world and kind of realized that vision that this place is truly disturbing something that the anime captured really well is you just be walking along and someone would jump off a building wait, wait what there were just tons of secrets people were sharing all over Reddit. It isn't that explosive, but there are things like new choices in gigs where there are exchanges of dialogue that reflect the decision making you've made in the past. For example, this one here with Big Pete involving his friend, Tiny Mike. There are other new interactions that you'll see throughout Night City, giving it a more dynamic feel. For example, a cop chasing down a, uh, a man in his underwear very nice to see. There's also more public protests in front of heavily armored NCPD soldiers. And perhaps the most important one that people are more contentious on is between update 1.5 and update 1.6, you could buy legendary clothing mods, for example, from vendors. But now if you go there, you cannot. This was actually confirmed on the forums that CD Projekt Red says that the vendors have been reprised and clothing mods can now be obtained from containers or drops from NPCs. A lot of people were upset about this because they wanted to be able to just access any legendary mods they could whenever. But to me, I like this change because it reminds me of what I think is a really good loot loop, which is in these Bethesda Game Studios games where they have like the legendary item at the end of a dungeon and you can't just buy that legendary item at a storefront. To me, I don't like legendary as a tier system when you have like rare, common, ultra rare, legendary, 
and you can just buy them from stores. I like, and this is of course asking a lot of the developer, but I like truly unique items. And there is a way to give them that unique rub without necessarily making them wholly unique. Like they may share the same assets as other weapons or armor or cyberware in the game, but just a naming convention and a unique spot to find them in will make them feel individualized compared to what is happening here where you could buy them in the stores. So I do understand why some folks were upset that this was removed from the game. But for me personally looking at it, I would kind of rather it this way. I think it's a little more immersive. I think it helps the gameplay loop, especially with a lot of new players coming in. The loop for Cyberpunk has effectively changed. There's been so many adjustments even to the gigs where once you complete all the gigs you get one final award from the fixer. There's just so many adjustments throughout the entire game that CD Projekt Red is truly finalizing the game in a lot of ways before our very eyes. What I'm most excited about though is moving forward. We know every update moving forward for Cyberpunk 2077 is not going to use last gen features. I think this is a brave move because we see games like for example, Resident Evil 4 Remake, which is gonna be a megaton release, still hanging onto the PS4, which I, I did find very disappointing despite the scalability of the RE engine. I just, I don't know why we're still hanging around at this point. I don't think it is as difficult as it once was to get next gen consoles, especially if you're shopping for an Xbox and you could concede to a Series S, which is still a fantastic console, but don't, don't get me started. I just think it's great to see that we do have developers willing to say, let's leave it behind and do what's best for the game because now we're bringing in that big audience, million plus players each day this week. People clearly like the IP. Let's just deliver on some good stuff here. So things like the overhauled crime system, that I cannot wait to see in action. And I'm very interested to see how they roll it out. Each update has had the one point whatever, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6. Will the police overhaul just be an individual patch or will it be a part of update 1.7 with a couple of other new features? I'm just very interested to see how they continue to present it. My guess is they would continue on to 1.7, 8, 9, and then 2.0 might be with the expansion launch and who knows what comes with that. That would be just terrific. But I find the future of this game to be very exciting. It's nice to see the conversation on it turning around. There was a period of time as someone who's created content through the good and the bad of this game, there was a period of time that I started to get the fatigue because every video I posted on it, even when I was fair, critical, but I wasn't screeching about how bad the game was for other people, even though that's not representative of my thoughts. It was a situation where it just started to get mentally taxing because it was like, I'm just, just injecting myself into a very toxic conversation. But it's nice to see things are starting to turn around a bit for CD Projekt Red for Cyberpunk 2077. Will it ever be as big as it should have been? Unfortunately, probably not. But to see the bounce back here does encourage me a bit and hopefully it's a shot in the arm enough where maybe they don't just stop at one expansion. We did have an interesting conversation on that in our last video. You should check it out on Cyberpunk 2077 where we did discuss, oh, it's kind of sad that they're likely not going to do any expansions beyond this, but that was before we started to get the data from how many people were diving into Cyberpunk. I do understand the notion of wanting to do more spin-offs and multimedia material. We've seen a lot of success with it clearly with Edge Runner, but I just feel like there's so much left to be realized here in Cyberpunk that I want to see them build a, a crown jewel and then move on. Maybe they'll get there once all the final patches are done. We shall see. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I've got for you in today's Cyberpunk 2077 video. So let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. I'm really excited to see your thoughts. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.